Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be talking about something called the reflex arc and it's a topic that you often learn about when doing nerves and synaptic transmission. Now before we talk about the, the reflex we need to first of all address what the CNS is. Now the CNS stands for the Central Nervous System. And that consists of the brain and the spinal cord. So we have brain and spinal cord. And that's what we mean by the CNS, the central nervous system. Now we have what's called the peripheral nervous system. And that's all the nerves that come off and branch from that spinal cord. Now, the reflex arc only involves, really, a central nervous system. The spinal cord is key to the reflex. Many sensations or stimuli that we pick up on, or that our body detects, transmits that information, if you like, to our brain for processing. But the reflex is automatic. There is no brain involvement. In fact, we say when we say it's automatic, what we mean is there's no thinking about it. The body just automatically does it. So what we're going to do is outline the principles of a very simple reflex or reflex arc as it's called involving the spinal cord. I should just say for completeness sake, because this video is aimed at key stage four, you do at key stage five to a certain degree things called cranial reflexes. So there are certain nerves involved in reflexes that do go to the brain, but the brain isn't actively involved in their processing, if you like. That's just one quick point to make. So let's start this simple reflex that we're going to talk about, the spinal reflex, with a stimuli. You need to have some form of stimulation. So we're going to imagine a really familiar setting. Let's say there is a Bunsen burner. So I'm just doing a super quick sketch. We've got a Bunsen burner going there. With a roaring flame. Achieving there. So that's going to be our, our stimulus. And we're going to imagine that we've accidentally brought our hand, a bit of an odd looking hand, but our hand a bit close to that flame. So the stimulus, the thing that is going to cause that response, the thing that our body will be stimulated by is, in this case, the Bunsen burner. And we are going to detect that stimulus with a receptor. So we have sensory receptors within the skin. So in our fingers that touch this flame, we have receptors that will detect that stimulus. So we have the stimuli, we have the receptor. Now we need to transmit that information. The receptor receives the information and transmits it along what's called a sensory neuron. Now a neuron is a scientific word for nerve. So we basically have and I'll draw this in red, we have a sensory nerve, I'll explain what this little circle is here, carrying this sensory information. So this is a nerve that is sensory. What I've drawn with this little circle here is just something called a cell body. Cell body is like, if you think of a typical animal cell, it looks a little bit like that. And 
we have from the cell body we have the axon which is a, a long thread like extension of it and that's what I've drawn here in this big long red line but the cell body is this big enlargement here now what we have is that sensory neuron passing to the spinal cord I'm just going to draw a very rough sketch of the spinal cord it's not the best drawing but what we have in our spinal cord it's only a very rough sketch in fact I'll label this just so we can see this outer part is what we call white matter and this darker region so the light region is called white matter and this darker central region is called grey matter and what you see is this sensory neuron comes to the grey matter and there it's synapses um, a synapse is a sort of connection between two nerves it's a gap between two nerves that neurotransmitter passes on it synapses so we'll draw an, another mini nerve there to what's called a relay nerve so if I were to sort of draw this I'll draw it above the spinal cord we almost have like a sensory here that meets a relay and then we're gonna have a third nerve if you like so that's what I've just drawn at this picture here and each of the red lines that I'm drawing in are where the nerves meet so we have a sensory and that synapses with what's called the relay nerve this one in green then from that relay nerve in the spine we have another nerve synapsing and this one is called the motor nerve or motor neuron a motor means moving so this is now the motor nerve and that motor nerve comes and it's carrying information about moving or, or a response if you like so we've carried the sensory information to the spine and now we need to act upon it so we have a motor neuron and it actually goes to here the muscles of the hand because what we have after the sensory nerve, if we put this back here, is the relay. Then after the relay, we have our motor nerve. And from the motor nerve, we go to what's called our effector. Now the effector is the part of the body that's going to bring about a response. See, the effector brings about a response. Sorry if it's a little bit unclear here. I've sort of drawn my flow chart, if you like, behind this red and blue line in the diagram. So we have stimuli being detected by a receptor. The information, sensory information is passed down a sensory nerve. Goes to the spine where it reaches a relay nerve. The synapses then with a motor neuron and that transmits information to an effector which will bring about a response. So if that information passes to the hand of them to the hand or to the muscles of the hand more specifically, that will cause the muscles to contract and pull the hand away from the flame. Now that is our basic reflex. It's designed to protect us. So the moment that you detect or the receptor picks up that heat from the flame, we instantly send that information to the spine and back, causing our muscles in the hand to contract and pull our hand away from that danger. So you can see very simple reflex has a sensory nerve, a relay neuron in the spine, and then a motor nerve going to the effector. The key things here are the receptor to detect the information and the effector to act upon it. Now one thing to add is that the receptor and effector doesn't 
don't always have to be the same thing. So in this instance, the receptor and effects were both in the hand. Imagine the scenario, you're driving along in the road and someone with a football jumps out in front of the car. Now in that case, the stimuli would be the person with the football, the, the person that's jumped out in the middle of the road. The receptor would be your eyes detecting that stimulus. So you see the person jumping out into the road. You transmit that sensory information down to the spine, back along a motor nerve, but the motor nerve this time would go to the legs, the muscles of the legs, because they would be the effectors, because you would use the muscle of the leg to brake in the car, to slow the car down. So there we have an example of where we have a receptor and effector that are different, different essentially in the body. The receptor in that scenario would be your eyes, and the effector would be the muscles of the leg that would cause the car to break. Another good, good example of an important reflex is actually blinking. It's one that many students ask me about. The blinking reflex, automatic, no brain involvement, you're not thinking about it, you're not consciously controlling when you're blinking. And the reason why you blink is to get rid of dirt and dust, debris if you like, from the eyes. So there we have another automatic response. Okay, so that's a little bit about the reflex arc involving our central nervous system, or more specifically in this example, the spinal cord. In another video, I'll talk more in detail about what's called the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous supply as part of a whole a larger video on nerves. Hope all that helps.